focusing more now on the extractive side of things, talking about uh, mining, and I'm being joined on the program by Anthony Mwakolo. He's a mining, mining consultant. Of course, there's been a lot of conversation with regards to that sector of the economy, solid minerals and how much revenue can be generated from it. Uh, very recently, the Federal Executive Council approved about 30 billion NAR as intervention fund for the mining sector. But how far will this go? I'm hoping that Anthony will shed some perspectives to this. So good morning to you, Anthony. Thank good you for morning. joining me on the program. Glad to be here. So let's start from, from there. About 30 billion naira is coming into that very critical sector that uh, for so long now, well, at a point, was actually very dormant. But there's been conversation you know, lately, especially with the minister, talking about how much revenue can be gotten from there. But how much impact do you think that this 30 billion naira intervention will make on the sector. Will it make any difference? Right. Um, the 30 billion is supposed to be the solid minerals component of the natural resource fund. The 1.6% that's supposed to be, you know, deducted from the FAC monthly. And I think the, 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 the spread of that money is 0.6% to agric, 0.5% uh, to water resources, and 0.5% to solid minerals. So I, I don't know how they came up with the 30 billion, but somehow it, must, it should equate to the 0.5% for solid minerals. Now the next question is what kind of impact will that amount of money have? Um, it will do some things, but I, I'm not even sure if that the approach that the ministry is taking is the right approach. I, I say that because um, the government is, is, has a primary role of um, administrator regulator as against owner operator. So the licenses for whatever deposits we have, of whatever minerals we have, are in the hands of private companies, private Nigerian-owned companies. So even if you're going to in, in, invest in exploration, as he claims, who are, you, who are you giving these monies to? Because the government doesn't own any cadastral units of its own. The most they have is the Nigerian coal corporation assets or Nigerian iron ore mining company assets, you know, things that were already established federal government organizations or entities. Um, I, I don't see how that will translate to import substitution by, by saying you want to give money to, to, for exploration. You know, so th that the strategy needs to be clearer. So in, in talking about a clearer strategy, a roadmap was actually launched as well very recently for the, um, for, the, for the mineral sector for you. In looking at that roadmap, just give us an idea what that roadmap actually is. Let's remind ourselves, let's remind our viewers what the roadmap is. The roadmap highlights, uh, it highlights all of the challenges, you know, of the, the solid minerals um, and mining ecosystem faces. It also tries to identify what will be the quick wins and it creates cat categories like uh, initiatives that will be implemented over several you know time phases the being the first being the immediate initiatives like uh, launching the roadmap getting approval which has been done and setting up the mining implementation strategy team who will deliver the objectives of the roadmap uh, and then the next phase which will be the short term phase is import substitution uh, i'd like for us to just stop at those two because import substitution is, a, is quite a heavy heavy ambition okay so i had a reason for asking you to you know give us an idea what that roadmap contains because in terms of strategies now to boost this very key sector that's why i'm guessing that the federal executive council approved that 30 billion as you know foundation money to ensure that the challenges that have been identified in the roadmap are quickly mitigated and you're trying to see how much you can encourage private sector participation in this very crucial sector of the economy and so you must water the ground if you'd like before you get people to come in yes okay so it, it would make sense if i understood how and where they want to carry out exploration you know geology is not something that is is uh, rocket science there has to be something called your topographical sheets which you would interpret like it's like airborne surveys so surveys have been carrying out if you are interested in iron ore for import substitution uh, you look at the figure first. Well, how much does Nigeria spend importing iron ore, whether in iron ore pellets or fines? I had a figure of about three billion dollars. You know, uh, if that, if you want to get the amount of iron ore that you will purchase with three billion dollars, which mine do you want to substitute that importation in? Is it because the best deposits are in Kogi State? So maybe if there was a clearer approach that shows I would want to mine one million tons from Itakwe, I would want to mine 500,000 tons from Bauchi, then it begins to be clearer. They will know what sites, because every site has geological coordinates. Isn't that contained already in the roadmap? No, no, it's not. 
The roadmap is just professionals. I mean, you look at the guys who developed it. All they've asked the minister to do is make sure he creates a team that is independent of the ministry so that the roadmap can outlive his time in the, in the office, such that you have a 10-year plan, and if the present administration is not in power, for example, in 2019, it won't hamper the implementation. So what can the private sector be doing? Because already I know that there's been a lot of conversations coming from organized private sector in this regard. What are you doing? What are you saying to the ministry? What are you saying to the minister in terms of making sure that there's... Uh, better collaboration and better understanding of what it is that needs to be done in this sector i mean you would write you know there's, there's the, 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 i mean we want to be politically correct especially on platforms like this so we don't put out the wrong signals but truth being said you know we have to have a minister who listens um we must have an independent watchdog who would watch the implementation of this roadmap such that the private sector confidence in its implementation will be increased. If you're going to spend 30 billion, let's know what the 30 billion is on. Don't go and buy rigs, don't go and buy core drills that NGSA already has. Because if we do an audit of where the money will be spent, a lot of things will be clearer. Hmm. So taking a look at it as an industry player and taking a look at it as a, a very bankable sector, do you think that everything that needs to be done is in place for the banks to, for instance, fund this project. Because if you're saying that this 30 billion naira, you're not sure where it's actually going to go, you know that these companies definitely will be looking for funds. So they're going to be talking to the lenders, they're going to be talking to the banks. And they'll be wanting to get um, relatively uh, easy, uh, cheap money, cheap funds. But at this time, yes, it's a bankable project, but how bankable are they? Okay, I don't know what banks you are referring to. Is it commercial banks or development commercial finance banks. institutions? You know, because we're still, well, we have about uh, six development financial, uh, financial institutions. One is coming up on stream, so we're going to be having it by seven okay. by 2017. But the, the last one, which is a development bank, is going to be focusing more on MSMEs. And I, I know for a certainty the mining industry does not have MSMEs. So we're talking about commercial banks on lending now to fund very critical infrastructure in that sector. So the, the, in answer to that, there are many challenges. First of all, the cost of fund to the bank will not support single-digit interest rate lending. Uh, we know the NPR is at 14%. It hasn't been reviewed downwards. When you add all the other fees, management fees, offer fee, and all the other bank fees that they add to it, you'll be getting to 22% per annum. You can't do mining business with that cost of funds. It's not just going to add up and because they're long-term. That's one. Two, uh, commercial banks are not necessarily professional mining banks. They are not specialized banks. They understand transaction cycles. So if you want commercial banks to be involved, you have to develop what we have already, which is the commodities exchange. You now have to have an active commodities exchange that's responsible for quality and assurance control. In terms of even storage, whether it be agro-based or solid mineral-based products, we have an NCX, which is Nigerian Commodities Exchange in Abuja. It's just not active. And that's the responsibility of the Federal Ministry of in in Industry, Trade and Investment. So what are they doing with that asset? They started the privatization process. They haven't even completed the RFP, which is the uh, request for proposals for consultants I will advise them on how to privatize it. I think that's a bit too cumbersome a process to go through that process just to get the consultants to advise you. So if you want the uh, commercial banks, as you said, to be able to come in, they work with data. So they want to be sure that if they're giving lending to somebody who's mining iron ore, what is the iron ore balance in the warehouse of the commodities exchange? What has been the consumption pattern over the last year, over the last two years? What has been the rate movement in terms of FX? So what was price per ton, for example, price per kg? This is what the banks will look at and say, oh, as a cooperative that mines uh, uh, lead in Bauchi, we can give you money. Without the commodities exchange, there's no reference point for them. It's, just, it's almost like Nollywood. Oh. That's how, that's how the structure is. Now, you cannot expect any artisanal miner to start to do EIA, mine planning, and all of those things overnight. So the government, like I said, starting with the ministry, has to take charge by identifying one location for each strategic mineral and developing the value chain from there. So in terms of developing the value chain, I'm very glad you mentioned artisanal miners. It seems as if the sector is dominated by a lot of them, and most of them are said to be operating illegally. So in, in terms of making that right, um, turning the illegal to legal, 
Should the federal government be looking at that as well? It's part of what they want to achieve. The question is how they want to achieve it. I'm not sure that they are engaging those who have the mental capacity and who have the passion to drive this. Because you're talking about people who are trying to eke out a living. There's no reason for a man who's already selling crude oil to start to bother about going to get an environmental impact assessment that he will submit to the Mines Environmental and Compliance Department, then Federal Ministry of Environment. You know, he's just okay doing the legal thing with an exploration license, so he doesn't do anything further. So at this time, going forward, and looking at how much um, the industry players such as yourself are expecting to, to see come out from the roadmap in, in terms of uh, um, actualization and implementation, would you say, um, for instance, that there should be another roundtable conversation, discussion, between the private sector, organized private sector, and the federal government? We needed it since two months ago because that's the only way we can know who the minister's advisors are. You've given us a roadmap, fine. You've chosen your implementation strategy team, fine. But the government is an administrator, regulator, not owner, operator. So if the private sector is indeed leading the charge, which is what's going to make it sustainable, then we, know to, we need to know why we haven't been able to talk to these people to know their plan for these seven minerals. Well, Tony, Anthony Wakolo, mining consultant, thank you so much for coming on the program this morning thank and, of course, uh, starting this conversation with us, which in the coming days we're hoping to push more. Thank you for having me.